In the previous episode, I've explored the largest and the most visited island of the Azorian archipelago, São Miguel. In four days spent on the island, I was able to see most of it, from magical parks and forests to charming small towns and beautiful coastline landscapes. Overall, São Miguel beat my expectations, and it was a great starting point to get to know the Azorian Islands. If I had to write a summary of a book about Azores, I would describe uh, São Miguel. São Miguel Island has everything that typical tourists need. From vibrant city of Ponta Delgada with beautiful restaurants, bars, and just the nightlife in general, to raw nature on the east coast, with the beautiful lakes and hills and the mountains. My journey with San Miguel ends here and tomorrow I am flying west. I'm going to explore a few more islands that are further west from San Miguel. I'm expecting to see something very different yet similar, but definitely excited. I'll see you then. Let's go. For my next destination, I've chosen an island of Fayal, which takes about one hour flight time and located approximately 400 kilometers to the west of São Miguel. After about one hour flight from Ponta Delgada, I landed at the small island of Fayal, with a total area of only 67 square miles or 170 square kilometers. Fayal is home to about 15,000 residents, majority of whom are concentrated around island's capital, port town of Horta. Horta welcomes its visitors with a colorful and sunny street, cobblestone roads, and of course, a very common for every Portuguese town tiling of the sidewalks and buildings. But with Horta and island of Fayal on the world's map, it's its harbor. You see, historically Horta's harbor has been the calmest in the Azores, which made this town a major seaport in the 19th century. Cargo ships and yachts started using it as a stopover before continuing their transatlantic journey. As a result, Horta's marina has become the main recreational harbor of the Azores. It is one of the busiest and most famous in the world. It is evident from hundreds of cool murals painted over the years by the crew members of a different boats from all over the world. Some of these murals look actually very nice. I can tell people were putting in work and time to, uh, to make those. On the other note, uh, it is a pretty incredible scenery just to uh, uh, see how many people have crossed through this port uh, over the years and uh, to have uh, this kind of memorabilia in the middle of Atlantic, it's pretty fascinating. It's like uh, walking through a little museum. Uh, it's definitely worth seeing. It's pretty cool. Fayal's unofficial name is a blue island, and it has to do with many of its houses painted in different shades of blue. Perhaps the most famous blue street is Jose Azevedo. It is here where the most iconic place of the island can be found. A century-old Peter's Cafe Sport has been a home to thousands of sailors from all over the world. Over the decades, this place has served as currency exchange, postal office, a yacht club, and of course, a cafe with delicious food and its famous gin. Walking in here and spending some time studying its walls made me realize that this wasn't just a regular cafe, but a piece of history in the middle of Atlantic. Here you can also find a very unique attraction, a scream show museum. Scream show is an art of engraving or carving done in the bone. And because this place is located in the middle of Atlantic, the bones that we use for this works came from whales. You see, in the 20th century, whaling was banned and the owner was able to preserve a beautiful collection of sailors' artworks here. 
Peter was smart, and when he saw that people were going to stop doing whaling, he started keeping this art, that back then people, while they were waiting for the whales to come, they were doing this to keep their time busy. Of course, that he kept one, two, three, and four, and now we have the biggest collection in the world, if it's at least officially. If it's not the biggest, I like to say that it's pr probably the most beautiful one. And why? Because we take this uh, artwork from the fountain. And why am I saying this? Because most of this, not, they are not made by fancy artists, they are made for, from whalers. As Marina said, most of the artworks here are made by local sailors. And if you're a fan of art and would like to learn more about Fayal's history, this place would be a great idea to visit. My next stop was on the west coast of the island, around a small village called Capello. This wasn't your typical tourist attraction, but the events that took place here 65 years ago had a major impact on Fayal Island and shaped its history. You see, historically Fayal has been suffering damages from human or nature factor, and if during 16th century the island was getting damaged by Spanish and British buccaneers, the most devastation was caused by nature, through a massive volcanic eruption that took place in 1957. I was able to find a rare footage of those tragic events, an eruption of Volcano Capelinos, that changed the lives of islanders forever. The village feels kind of empty and there is a mixed feeling about it. There is a lot of uh, survivals that still live here, but a lot of them lost their relatives due to eruption. A lot of them migrated, uh, immigrated to North America and the families haven't been united since. The eruption of Capelinos volcano has formed a small island linking it to Fayal. Capelinos Lighthouse serves as a reminder of those tragic events, as it witnessed Fayal's land expansion and its population contraction. Entering the area of Capelinos Volcano is similar to landing on the moon. Not that I ever landed on the moon, but that's what it feels like. Dark and wavy soil resulted from remains of submarine volcano spitting ash and slag for 13 months. Yes. 13 months from September 1957 to October 1958. At the time, the community faced severe repercussions, families were forced to leave, and those who decided to stay faced hefty bills to pay for their homes and crops destroyed. I have decided to go on a short hike around here. You see, because of the eruption of Capelinos volcano and extension of Fayal Island, the westernmost point of Europe got extended also. Yes, I know, there are a few more islands to the west, but they lie on North American plate. So depending how you look at it, I could be walking on the westernmost point of Europe. So I wanted to take it off of my bucket list. Because of its close location to Fayal, I've decided to visit one of the largest islands of Azorian archipelago, the island of Pico. I will take a ferry from Horta to the port town of Madalena, which will be my starting point in exploring Pico Island. So I just boarded the ferry. It usually costs around uh, 45 euro to uh, uh, bring the car plus the ticket for one person. Uh, I'm just gonna go upstairs now and uh, should be uh, at the island of Pico in about half an hour. Pico is named after a mountain created by three volcanic eruptions, once in 16th and twice in 18th centuries. It is located right in the middle of the island and I was able to have a glimpse of it along with the beautiful sunrise while approaching my destination. Pico is the second largest island of the Azorian archipelago, with an area of approximately 430 square kilometers. Its landscape is a mixture of lava rock and exotic vegetation. 
It is also very scarcely populated with population of only 13,000 inhabitants. The history of Piku was built around its whaling and winery traditions. And along with seeing the mountain itself, these were my primary reasons why I've decided to visit the island. And so I've headed southeast towards the municipality of Lajas do Piku to learn about whaling first. Lajas is the oldest port on the island with the longest history of whaling. Everything here is associated with whale hunting as it was an important aspect of cultural identity as well as economy of the island. It is first started being practiced back in 19th century until fully being banned in 1986. Nowadays, whales are safe in the Azores, which is currently world's largest whale sanctuary. Whale hunting itself was an extremely dangerous activity because of the boats that were used here were very primitive and weak, usually ranging from 6 to 8 crew members with one person in charge of launching the harpoon and the rest rowing. Lashes offers a unique opportunity to experience those whaling days through memories and stories. After hearing some of them, I've learned something very interesting. Americans actually introduced the island to the whaling industry. However, the locals, they didn't have a proper tools or sophisticated boats. They were using very primitive uh, stuff to go whaling. That required for the sailors and fishermen to be very brave and fearless. And so Americans would come from the East Coast and actually hire these guys for their boats because these guys were one of the best in the Atlantic when it comes to whaling. After learning about whaling, I've decided to head to the other side of Pico, but instead of taking the popular coastal roads, I chose to go deeper into the island with hopes to see the Pico's mountaintop. It was exactly at this moment when I've discovered the true beauty of this island. Traffic Azorian style. I came to this island on a boat and I did not have a lot of expectations for it. I thought it would be very gloomy, very dark, and it did seem like that at the beginning. The moment I arrived, I saw a lot of warehouses, a port, uh, a lot of volcanic formations, dark rocks everywhere, so I did not have a lot of expectations. I drove around, I spent the whole day and I realized how beautiful this island actually is. Piku has everything to basically reconnect with the nature, to just get away from the hustle and bustle, to enjoy yourself. The animals, the cows are everywhere. You can smell the cow's waste everywhere, which reminds me of like childhood when I used to go to my grandma. If you're in Fayal, Definitely come here for a day trip. It's literally 30 minute ride. You'll see something different, something organic. Definitely enjoy it. At some point, the sky cleared out and there she was, the beautiful mountain Pico, the tallest mountain in Portugal at 2,350 meters above the sea level. But what makes it very special is the fact that it is actually the highest underwater mountain in the world at 6,098 meters. And if the mountain was fully above the sea level, it would be only 400 meters shorter than Everest. To be quite honest with you, while driving through this part of the island, I had a constant smile on my face, just enjoying time alone with nature. And for that, I'm grateful. There was one last part to cover on the island, Pico's wineries. Winemaking came to the Azores in 15th century when French brought Verdelio grape here and when the islanders discovered that this grape made good fortified wine, Pico was put on the map. Actually, Fayal Island played a very significant role in production and distribution of Pico's wine. The soil was shipped from Fayal here 
because it's richer and it helped grow the grapes. Also, the workers were coming in here to help harvesting uh, the grapes and also building garage, which is the structures uh, made of volcanic rock right behind me. Porta port at Fayal is bigger and it was used to distribute Pico's wine to the mainland Portugal as well as internationally. I was extremely fascinated with Pico's unique wine growing technique, which by the way is UNESCO World Heritage Site. And so I headed west to find Pico's wine museum where I could learn more about it. So today is Sunday and this is the second museum that I came to visit on the island of Pico. And to my surprise, it was free again. Apparently, Sundays are free to visit any museum on the island and I can't complain about it. As an added bonus, around Pico's Wine Museum, I found these beautiful trees, which turn out to be very special. You can see behind me, uh, these are dragon trees, and this spot here has the highest concentration of dragon trees in the world in one area. Pico's wine production was actually halted for a long time due to a known disease that affected the wines and only in 1990s the production was resumed and nowadays Pico produces a different variety of tasty wines. One of the most popular ones it would be the blackberry one and the honey one and the fig one. But you have all of these ones here that you could try. And of course, I couldn't resist trying it, and so I went down to the coast and ended my adventurous day at this beautiful island with a fine glass of Pico's tasty wine. Visiting the islands of Fayal and Pico was a great choice for a short stopover. They've offered a different aspect of Azorian islands, from sailing traditions at the port of Horta to calm and peace of Pico. Whatever it is that you are looking for, I promise you, you will find it here. So far I've seen three islands. All of them share something in common that's beauty. Also, they all have different identities. That's what I like the most about it, because I had an idea that going from island to an island will be very, very similar and I would not enjoy myself as much, but I was wrong. Every single island is a beauty and definitely I would recommend visiting. However, tomorrow I am super excited. I'm going to the island of Flourish, which is the most western island of archipelago of Azores. From what I researched and from what I heard, Flourish is supposed to be like a next level uh, wonder of nature. So I'm super excited and I hope the weather is going to be good and I hope I will enjoy it as much as I enjoyed the previous three islands. I'll see you there. Peace. <laughs>